Hi, I'm Brielle and I'm a first year student here at Glen College of York University and this is a wood residence tour. So I'm doing this video because I am not from Ontario and so I was not able to know what any of the residences looked like or had any updated version anywhere online when I was applying last year. And so I wanted to create a video showing you what 2024 wood residence looks like and hopefully give a few students who don't live in the province an idea of what it looks like to live in wood residence. If you want to see Hilliard, I'm not sure if there's any other videos out there, but leave comments if you really want to see Hilliard and I can try and get access through my friends. A few general things first, there are three sizes of the rooms. There is a traditional, there is a small, and there is a double. So I currently have a traditional single. I live by myself. I have my own room, but there are shared bathrooms on every floor. There are three floors with a basement. So I guess four floors and there are bathrooms on every floor. Here they are divided into houses. So in wood residence, we have A, B, C, D and E house. E house is all women and women identifying people. So we have our own bathrooms. All the others are co-ed and they have co-ed bathrooms. Third floor, I believe is the quiet floor. So just in general, quiet and more or less social. Although I know that B house doesn't really adhere to that rule. You kind of give and take. In Wood Residence, there is a francophone section. I think it is one house on one floor. I'm not sure where it is, but people speak French everywhere. Like I speak French. There's other people in, on my floor that speak French. D house, there's a lot of French speakers as well. So you kind of just, well, it's Glendon. It's francophone. There's everybody here. Another general rule is that everyone in residence must have a meal plan and meal plans are varied they have them all detailed on the york website you can go check that out easily just search up york meal plan <laughs> there are kitchens in the basement of every house you can apply to have kitchen access especially if you have dietary restrictions that the cafeteria cannot sub create substitutions for they have a lot of gluten-free vegetarian and vegan substitutions but if you have more severe allergies or a combination of allergies that you can't they don't have they can't accommodate for you can get kitchen access I believe it's $200 a month but you don't have to pay for meal plan don't don't come at me if I'm wrong this is only secondhand information I am on meal plan this is a general overview of what a traditional room looks like obviously mine is personalized so when you come into my room you see my closet everyone gets this closet it's quite spacious i find it's got two doors and two drawers inside the closet we have one rack and then a shelf above the bottom also holds quite a bit these two drawers are quite deep and long so the entirety of my sweater collection fits in one of them this is the tiny little mirror that everyone gets you can place your closet in a place where the mirror is a little more accessible. As you can see here, I was able to fit a couch into my room. It was just the way that I organized all my furniture. I also have my coffee cart where I keep some of my dishes. The Coldex fridge is rented. You get a form for that at the beginning of the year. This heating, me turning the knob, is how you adjust how much heat is left in your room. Everyone gets this window. I made myself a little seat. There is the window to the outside. The other side of the hallway faces the forest. These are my curtains. They don't hold a lot of daylight, but it does get quite dark at night, so it is not so bad. Here is my bed, and as you can see, I lifted it up to the top rung in order to fit my dresser underneath. It fits perfectly if you lift it all the way up and I was also able to get an Ikea cube thing for a little bit extra storage. My suitcases are also all the way underneath there. They are tucked out of the way, but I can get them when I need them. 
Here is my desk, and as you can see, there is one tiny little drawer, a garbage, a recycling. I've decorated my desk quite a bit, but here we're coming to the very end. Here is my door, and I've hung a little calendar with an outlet and my light switch. So in general, that was my dorm. It's quite easy, we're given very few things, but there's really an opportunity to make it your own. I personally, because I don't live here, I wanted this space to really feel like home. Others that I know go home on the weekends have decorated less. Some of my international students couldn't have, weren't able to bring as much or didn't have access to be able to buy as much. So they have a little bit less, but over the, over the year, you accumulate things that are important to you, different posters, different flyers. There's always a poster sale at Kiel. And it just, for me, it was really important to make it feel like home. That's why I have a million different things on my walls, but you're free to do whatever you like and to decorate it however much or however little you want. Now, this is a quick view of our bathrooms. This is the e-house bathroom. There are two sinks, two mirrors, a soap dispenser, two individual showers. They each have their own light switch. I turned it off because I'm particular. There's a heater, a garbage can, and the view of what the other side of the building looks like. Two individual toilet stalls, and this is a locked room with a toilet, a sink, and a full shower. There is not much else. It's quite simple, quite easy, but it works for all of us. Now here is a view of what one floor looks like. This is the third floor. We're walking through E House right now. There are several dorms. Each on this floor I believe are individual, except for possibly the one at the end. There's the bathroom we just walked through, and here's the door to D House. We have signs on all the doors, whether to push or pull, because they do alternate. Somebody hit the exit sign and so now it's broken, but maintenance is very good for cleaning, for repairs. You can call them if anything is wrong in your room. You can call them if the bathrooms aren't clean. Honestly, maintenance is great. We love them. They do daily, basically daily cleaning and maintenance of our buildings. And now we are approaching the end of Sea House, but before we walk into B, you'll see that there is a door. This is our garbage room, so that you don't have to go outside to throw out your garbage. It's great, there's one on every floor. The third floor just happens to be in C House. Here's B House, I have a lot of friends that live in this floor. There's their co-ed bathroom. And as I approach the end of the third floor, we get to A House, and I'm going to descend the stairs to get to the common room. Each house has a common room on the ground floor where there's extra seating, there is a sink, and there is a microwave where you are able to do more because the sinks in the bathrooms are quite small. I wash my dishes in the common room and it's just really helpful to have a space where you can hang out with other people. I know some Dons are RAs do their house meetings here and most of them just look like this. So now I'm descending into the basement to get to the laundry room. In the laundry room it's one in wood, there are two in Hilliard. Here it's in the A house basement. You can see there right as you enter here is where you pay for the laundry. At the moment it's $1.75 for wash, $1.50 for dry and there are five washers and five dryers. Now I'm just making my way through the basement to get to the lobby on the first floor. It's in D house, but on the way there, I'm going to stop and show you what the kitchen looks like. This is actually one of our games rooms. I've never been in there, but apparently we have access to it. This is what one of the kitchens look like. I do not have access so I couldn't go in, but there's a table, it seems to be like there's two fridges and a stove and a counter. Here I'm going to ascend the stairs to get to the first floor to show you the lobby. Here is a door, emergency exit door, and then right up in the lobby on the inside we have mailboxes individually for each of us. 
we have our smaller mail in these and then moving into the lobby this door is locked the only way through is with a student id of the person living here at 7 p.m behind that glass door we have porters who sign in any guests and now i'm showing you where most of our amazon packages get left and then the recycling so this is me a few days later realizing that i did not do a summary of the video so new outfit new me if you can hear those sirens we live right next to sunnybrook hospital sometimes we get helicopters from people being airlifted the sirens go a lot sometimes they're really dramatic like four or five at once but they're not constant so it's a little bit of a downfall i guess of living in such a beautiful place i love glendon i love campus I really don't mind wood residents. The most annoying thing is that there's only one laundry room. Sometimes people's clothes are in there and then I guess no elevator. It's really hard carrying up entire full suitcases when you're moving in up three flights of stairs. But during move-in, there's a lot of people there around to help you. It's great. Anyways, so if you have any requests or any comments, please leave them at the bottom of this video and I will try to respond to them as quickly as I can. If you want to see Hilliard, I have a friend who lives there. She told me that she can give me access. I am not endorsed by York University. I am here for the people. I wanted this video. I'm doing this video. Check out my other YouTube videos if you want. I don't know. It's just me being a goof all the time. Whatever. Hope to see you next year.